Kia ora whanau. welcome to our online service today. Uh, speaking for us today is going to be Eddie Forster. It will be his last time, both he and Kath uh, are farewelling us uh, as a church community and connecting deeper into their own new community in Ramati. Uh, they've been with us for over 20 years and just want to say a heartfelt thank you for all you both have done for us. You've both served on the eldership. Uh, you've been here through trying times, through, through great times, through very difficult times. There was a lot of care, a lot of love that you've poured out upon us. And we just want to thank you. Uh, bless you as you do head out. Today, uh, we'll also have a small spot from our Whakaronga Mai team, a, reflecti a reflective space just for us to reconnect with God. Uh, next week, we'll be bringing on some interviews. Uh, we've got lined up a few people as we'll spread them out over the weeks to come. Now, God bless you today. May God watch over you and may he keep you safe in his way. Um, be challenged as Eddie shares. Be challenged as we pray together. Uh, blessings upon you in Jesus' name. Amen.
ko te timetanga o te whakaaro nui ko te wehiki hei hoa ko ia te timetanga, ko ia te whakamutinga ki a whakapaingia te ingo i ngā mea katoa tihei wairi ora ki te whare tu nei tēnā koe ki a tātou whānau o āriki nui tēnā hoki kaitau nau mai haere mai ki a tātou hui mō tēnei ata e huri ana ki te reo tūtahi mō au uh, kia ora, my name's Eddie. Uh, this wasn't expected in terms of the way we're doing it today. Uh, Catherine and I thought we'd be here for our last morning, but it hasn't worked out like that. And um, the little bit in Māori at the beginning says, well, the beginning and end of all wisdom is the fear of the Lord. So we just trust that what's happening, he knows and he cares about. So we're just putting our trust in him this morning. I'll say now, so I don't forget to do it at the end, to everyone that's contributed to us in the last 25 years, 26 years, thank you. Uh, you've been with us through a lot. We've lost parents, we've had miscarriages, we've had weddings, we've had 21sts, we've seen the building change, and uh, you have all been a part of that, and so we call you whānau. Uh, we know there's a purupuruake this afternoon. If you come, that's cool. If not, that's all right too. Um, the whole concept of being called whānau is family, and family don't change just because you're not physically side by side. Uh, family will always be the same, and so if you ever wind up, out on the Kapiti coast, someone will be able to give you directions to where our door is. Uh, so, how did I wind up here this morning? I um, said to Rob one day, it was a pretty stressful day, are you preaching tomorrow? Are you going to be alright to preach? I said, I've got something for our church. And uh, he didn't need it, so he didn't get it that day. Um, but with this being my last morning, he's, he's uh, been gracious enough to let me stand at the pulpit and, um, and uh, it's, yeah, you're going to uh, hear um, possibly, you know, a little disturbing sometimes, but um, when uh, our daughter Leah was turning 17, um, we we went, left church, we saw this kid behind us as I was backing out and Leah told me who that was and I thought, oh, they're having a hard time. I wonder if I can touch base with them. And I came back and I tried to touch base with the kid, couldn't find them on the street. And I was late to a meeting. It was a meeting with Rob and uh, Kotahitanga and it actually wasn't a good meeting. Poor old Rob didn't know what he had done, but I was pretty disturbed and unsettled and I wanted to go and find him. And, I walked out after that meeting. I couldn't wait to walk out. I had to catch Rob up later, try and set things right. But I walked out to try and find this kid again, and I couldn't find her. I drove around the streets, and um, it just didn't happen. And so anyway, the next day was the first day of school. I can tell you, 5th of February. I uh, did my first day of school, and I wound up at the Fraser Hockey Turf. Now, uh, a couple of kids, one from Marsden, one from St. Orans, they were there, it was a beautiful night, it was heading on dusk, the sun was setting, there was very little wind, Leah was walking over from softball practice. I mean, it just proved that one day Jesus was coming back, especially when St. Orans and Marsden asked Nai Nai to coach them. You know that Jesus is coming. I get this phone call. And it's one of my ex-students. I had to say, do you mind if I take this call? The kids were all good. I called and um, one of my ex-students told me that the girl I'd seen the day before had passed away. Um, we wouldn't have called it passed away in the 80s, but she had passed away. And she, <laughs> crazy, an 18-year-old, 
call a 17 year old calling a 50 year old to tell them someone had passed by, I thought this is just nuts. And anyway, I just uh, I, I'm a teacher, I'm a coach, um, I've looked after youth, I've uh, looked after a boys' home group for 14 years, I've done all this stuff, and uh, you just don't expect to hear that news. And, um, and just the knowledge that I'd actually gone and tried to locate the kid the day before, it just really did my head in. And, um, anyway, the, the parents to their credit had said, oh, we're not going to have an open service, it's going to be a closed service, but if you want to come and see her, come on Thursday. So we turned up, and on my way I said to the Lord, Lord, if I had to speak on behalf of us and you, what do you want me to talk about? And uh, you might think that's a little bit audacious. Um, you might think that's a bit weird, but you've just got to remember, so I'm a Christian, Maori teacher, European teacher. I've blessed a flex bush that's been hacked to bits. I've blessed a playground. I've blessed somebody's haircut. I've blessed a bike track. The haircut one, that one really, I do, I'm not bragging, but we, this guy says, we don't normally do haircuts. I want to donate the proceeds from a, get proceeds from my haircut, and I'm going to donate it to child cancer. And, um, and I said, right. So anyway, you've got to remember it's a secular setting. I found a, a passage in the Bible, and the, and uh, we did this hair cutting, and it was basically talking about protection for the guy. And uh, four years later, it actually feels like it's the boy's turn, and he contracts cancer, and he survives. And so I just want you to know, as an encouragement church, that where you are and who you are, you're not there by mistake. What you do is what you do. Who you do it for is important. And... Um, the Lord gave me that opportunity and I was always thankful. So it was conceivable that I was going to speak, but it didn't happen. So um, Leah's 20 now, that's three years ago, so you're going to get it today. And uh, the passage that the Lord showed me that day was Luke 15. And uh, Luke 15 is three stories. Um, the first story is about a shepherd. He's got a hundred sheep, one of the sheep go missing. He notices the sheep is missing, and so he goes hunting for it. The second um, story is about God's got is a woman in this picture, and uh, she's got ten coins. They're silver coins. They're worth a day's work each, and uh, she hunts for it until she finds it, and she's really happy about it. And then the last one is this boy. Uh, decides that he's got an, um, he's had enough of home basically, he's had enough of the family, he leaves, he mucks up big time, he comes home under a cloud and his father accepts him back. And so we're just going to go through those three stories and, um, and, and see what encouragement we get from it and I pray that you do get encouragement from it but um, I just want you to know that for me, if our girl could have got a message, if I was going to give that crowd a message, it was going to be that God loves us this much. Never, never can we get completely Him enough. He loves us this much. And um, obviously she didn't know that. So anyway, um, Something about the people that Jesus was talking to. He was talking to what we might call the unfavorable, the dodgy, the sick or the poor, which had connotations around it that day. But also listening to him was a group of men, probably men, yeah, men, and uh, they were religious. And they were listening to what he was saying necessarily. They were watching who he was talking to and they were judging him. And um, 
So the first thing is, Jesus gets his priorities sorted. He um, turns around and he tells the story about the shepherd, notices that one of the sheep's missing and he goes looking for the sheep. I've got a little bit of experience, not much. I know a little bit about sheep. We used to have one. It's one of the few pets that I remember us ever having. And uh, the first thing that you notice is when they're lonely or when they're scared, they make a noise. And uh, we used to have this sheep inevitably just after midnight, the baby, the sheep would actually turn around and start bleating. And I'd have to go up and I'd have to say Milo, name of the sheep, Milo, and I'd pat its back and it would calm down. And then after a while, all I had to do was go and stand at the corner of the house and say, Milo, calm down. And then after a while, all I had to do was open the window at the back of our house because I had the back bedroom. Anyway, I just want you to know that if you feel lost, if you are wondering about whether you want to follow God or not, it might feel like you have to come to him, he's looking for you. That's the message that I would get out of Luke 15. God's looking. God knows that you are lonely. He knows that you are fearful, but God's looking for you. He picks it, he find, the shepherd goes and finds the sheep, puts it over his shoulders and walks back and he's rejoicing. He's literally singing over the fact that he's caught it and found it again. And he puts it with the other hundred sheep, uh, other 99 sheep. Easier for them to understand back in those days. And the reason for why it's easier is they, they were agrarian. They understood how sheep work, you know. And so they knew the stories of David, who got his, got his training out in the wilderness while looking after his sheep. They might have heard Jesus say, I am the good shepherd. They might have heard... Um, Jesus say, my sheep hear my voice, and they know it. And so when you come to God, just be aware that he, he didn't just wait for you, he went and looked for you. And so I encourage you to keep making and searching and looking for him because he's looking for you. The second story is a um, story of a, wo a woman that loses a coin. She's got nine uh, left in her hand, but she's lost the tenth one. And she goes looking for this coin and finds it. The coin's worth a day's work. It's not like she's lost 50 cents here. She's found a day's worth of work by searching and finding. And she makes such a jubilant response and that she includes her neighbours and says, be happy for me, I've found this coin. Now, I was, I was brought up in the days of um, family benefit. All our parents were given a certain amount of money by the government for each child in the family. I'll tell you what, my mother and lots of other mothers were heroes. They stretched that money to get the absolute best out of it. They knew if a dollar was missing, they gave you money they wanted to change, they knew the best specials, they knew how to save. If this is the picture of God, anything like my mother, this woman had an absolute purpose for this coin. And if you are going to come to God, you need to know you don't have to find value. He's looking for you because you are valuable. And he's got a purpose for you once he finds you. So when you come to God, be aware, he already has something in mind for you. And he will be overjoyed when you come. And thirdly, there's this last story. It's a lot more in depth. A lot of people talk about the uh, prodigal son. This kid, I'll call him a kid, um, says to his father one day, I want to leave home. I want to leave my family. That's a big deal. I want to get out from under your wing. I want to take what I would get if you were dead. I want to take my inheritance. 
It's like saying, if, they, if the people listening on were hearing, I wish you were dead. I don't want to be with you anymore. And the father gives it to him. I don't quite get that, but anyway, gives it to him. The guy takes off, has this great lifestyle, and then things turn out for the worse. He runs out of money. He winds up feeding pigs. He's not allowed the pig's food. He can't even eat as well as the pigs. And he turns to himself one day and says, I wonder what it would be like. Can I go back to the father? And so he makes this decision to go back to a father whose heart he's probably already broken. And it says that while he was at a distance, the father sees him. The father's got to have been looking out in the first place. And I, I sort of don't want to go into it too much, but get a picture. Um, the father's rich. And apparently, there's lots of arguments about whether fathers rich fathers, well-off people ran in those days, did they bear their ankles, did they get dust on their... I really don't care, I just want you to get this picture. Apparently the, lo the richer you were, the longer your robe was. I don't know if you've tried running in a robe before, if it's up to here, you're all right. Once it gets below the knees, you sort of got to hook it up a bit. Here's the kicker, I researched it, no undies. What they did have was loincloth. Glorified nappies, okay? And so here's the father running towards the boy. You could imagine being the boy, going, no, Dad, you don't need to be like that. But the father does not care. The father is not embarrassed. He keeps running. And he keeps running, and the, the party that results as a result of this boy coming back is huge. He kills a, a whole beast. He invites people in. He gives the kid a ring. I don't quite get that, but yeah, I'm still learning about that. And, um, and they had this big party. My son was lost and now he's found. He's been away. He's come back. He made a stink choice, but he's fixed it up. And, um, and the father is, once again, absolutely ju jubilant. It talks about, and this uh, talks about the, um, it speaks to the guys that were watching on and judging Jesus for um, talking to this group and encouraging them that God loves them and is looking for them. It talks about the big brother or another brother. And the brother's been out on the fields working, so he hasn't been wasting his time. And uh, he comes in and he says, what's going on? And someone says, oh, your brother's back and your dad's throwing a party. And the brother lines up the father and says, what are you doing? This guy all but spit on you. He all but told you he wished you were dead. He's come back and you're throwing a party. I've been here doing all this work and you don't do anything for me. And the father says, but I'm here in your presence every day. Yes, you work, you keep on doing all this work, but you haven't been with me all this time. I'm here in your presence every day. Come and join the party. The story's all finished there. It doesn't say what the brother does, it just says that the father returns to the party. And so you might think, well, why would you have wanted to say that, Eddie, at the situation you were going to? If you are looking at following God, this is what I feel you need to know. Number one, it's not just you coming to him, he's looking for you. He, he will put himself at risk. I love that song, Reckless Love. Apparently there's some uh, argument about whether it's good or not, I think it's good. He does not worry about putting himself in danger or himself on the line. In fact, he's done that for you. And he's looking for you. I believe that he says to you, you are worth, worthy as you are. Whether you are under the table, well, that's a, bit, a few drinks, but under the mat, or in someone's pocket, 
You already have value. You don't have to work to be valuable. You are already of value. You don't have to scrub up. You don't have to get things right. Come as you are. You are already valuable. And he's got a task for you. Just check out Pack and Save. Five dollar week, four dollars is not as good as five dollars. That last dollar counts. And so what you need to do, just be aware that when you come, God, yes, he will accept you and God will restore you, but God will have something for you to do. And then finally, God runs to you. You just have to look like you're coming back. And he won't sit there and wait for you to come and fall on your knees and make everything right. It might be a requirement sometime, but he just needs to see you wanting to come back in the distance, and he runs to you. And so church, this, this is my encouragement to you. I've watched our kids in the valley for a while now. I've listened to parents, teammates, people in our church. We can judge for all sorts of things. We can judge on income. We can judge on the suburb they live in. We can ju judge on the school, the sports club. I've had kids have their head split on their hands to shake our kids' hands because they got their clothes from the warehouse. There's all sorts of reasons that we can judge. And in our world at the moment, it's the last thing that our people need to hear. If you see someone missing, go and find them. If you know someone's lonely, go and spend time with them. If someone needs reassuring or they need you to give them value again, find the time to do stuff with them. Point them back to God. We want to be like Jesus and if we're like Jesus, the Bible clearly says, he who has seen the Son has seen the Father. And so we need to be more like God. And I pray that I've encouraged you, I hope it's not too judgmental, I pray that I've encouraged you to do that. To be like God. Because we're finding, uh, we, we've gone out to the Carpenty Coast and I said to my wife, you know, we need to, well, we already discussed it. We need to find a way to connect. Actually, the doors are there and the doors are open. You just have to turn up at them. And I'd encourage you to do that. So, um, yeah, I just want to leave that with you. And I pray that this morning it's encouraged you to look at what you've got, to look at the people around you and see who that you can influence. And if you want to follow Christ, I would encourage you, make sure, I don't know, touch base with Rob, send an email, Ask for a cup, if you can meet him for coffee or whatever. But if it encourages you to Christ, then I'd encourage you to do that. Bless you. Thank you for sticking around. Pray that you may be blessed as you kind of digest all that has gone on in today's service. Uh, for more information about what's happening in the future for us as a church, just below in the uh, in the title of the uh, of this. Uh, YouTube clip, you'll see a link to our MailChimp newsletter that will have outlined all the information that's going on uh, for us as a church family over the course of the next few weeks. Also, if you've not been part or are not part of a life group, please let us know. We would love to hear from you. We'd love to connect you into our communities, especially during this time of uncertainty and not knowing how we will connect. Life group is uh, the place will happen for us as a church community. Just email uh, to that email just below there and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. God bless you. God watch over you this week. In Jesus' name, amen.